They over here complaining about this. The next man over there. They were rudderless. They were directionless. And that's why we in the stew that we are in today. Mr. Christie, uh, Mr. Christie, Mr. Robert said that the, the government is continuous. I recall um, in 2002, you made uh, a speech in which you said that uh, you are going to reverse the government's decision at Clifton. Uh, you said um, uh, in recent times that uh, you told buyers beware or investors beware with uh, respect to the to the dock right. that a plp government will reverse that particular decision um that is not in keeping with what your chairman just said there are two things i want to speak to for, let's deal with that first uh, any political organization that has a fundamental disagreement with a current policy going on has an obligation to voice that disagreement to the public and to say to the public, this is wrong for the country. And in the event of our coming to power, right, we will reverse that. We did that. Ingram did it in the, with the Pinling government with respect to some development in the proximity to Goodman's Bay. I did it with respect to Clifton. With respect to this present port, I called it an abomination. And this perhaps brings in one of the most significant um, discussions that we should have in our country, the extent to which governments should follow precedents or established agreements entered into by their predecessors. In the case of the port, the government of the Bahamas under me had undertook all of the studies, made them all pu public. The public was aware that Arawaki was very low, if not the lowest in terms of the points accorded to which port place should be the best. We selected a port that we thought would have an economic impact on Andros, would have an economic impact on South Abaco by putting it at Clifton. We knew environmentally, terrestrially, that all of the studies indicated we could do that. We also knew that from the environmental point of view, the government was going to make a decision for Albany and agree a, a marina at Albany we were going to make a decision with respect to a development at South Ocean, all in the immediate vicinity, and therefore the environmental degradation that would take place would all be consistent with the development, plus it had happened already when they developed the new Clifton port out there. So we thought it was the right decision. What we have said to this government, you are proceeding in the wrong way. The decision making is wrong. We have not yet seen the agreement entered into, and I am now apprehensive that when the terms of that agreement is known to the public, we are going to see something in there that again will make it even a purer abomination. But one step, so, so with respect to Mr. Roberts, Mr. Roberts has the right point. Governments, yes, have the right to review. But when you have an onset of a recession that was going on and the signals were coming, coming in, the government was, I think, had an imperative to understand that by the contracts given, the school in Akron, the school in Freeport, the straw market, all transparent contracts that it would have created employment and would have amounted to a cushion to minimize the impact of the recession in those communities where the contracts were being um, allowed or being awarded. The danger is that the Ingram government and Hubert Ingram has now established a very dangerous precedent no one could ask a PLP government now why it has stopped a contract. And it is ludicrous to believe that you could pass some, you could agree something that another government can't undo. When you have taken pains to demonstrate contract after contract, you are prepared to cancel. It is going to be very difficult for your government to change the port situation. Mr. Jones, uh, the, Mr. Jones the, let me stop you. If, right if you, no, if you, you want to we don't have, the government. We don't have to speculate on that. If the Ingram government was able to do it, the PLP government, by the very definition of governance, is able to undo it. That, that, that's said. Now, having said that, having said that, though, having said that, what I cautioned my colleagues and the country to recognize is that we are responsible and we will examine the terms of the agreement entered into. We're not going to be rash about this. We're going to examine the terms of the agreement entered into, and we will speak to the country as to why it is wrong or why we may have to compromise. See, but the point I make is this, that in this one, unlike the one at Clifton, okay, the Ingram government, having learned from Clifton, has protected the base 
a narrow base of their voting support and special interest people who own the ports, and then they will now take some shares and give it to the Bahamian public, enriching even further through government support, the special interest group, and that is a very dangerous thing to do. We have the responsibility of preparing ourselves for the next election. And I just want to end with this point because you raised it with governments and political parties have a duty somehow to have some kind of understanding of what is good for the country. Prime Ministers have that responsibility. Ingram and I ought to know each other, respect each other well enough to be able to share certain things that are important to the country going forward. The FNM decided to exploit Meguana. Meguana came about by the PLP putting in a platform yes. in 2002 yes. that this country needs a lot of jobs. Right. And one way of creating those jobs is to create a model similar, an economic model similar to Freeport, but learning from the lessons of Freeport. Yes. So we then decided that we would take Meguana we would allocate 10,000 acres to that in increments over 25 years. We would have 50% partnership. We would require the investors to meet the infrastructural costs as a part of their contribution. We would let them manage the marketing of it, but the government would have the control and ensure that there's a social balance going forward. We believed when we did that, that we had a model in Providentialis and the Turks and Caicos, Mr. Jones. And we thought, we saw the exponential growth of the economy in the Turks and Caicos Providentialis, and we thought with the government in charge of it, incentivizing the return of Meguanans home to Meguana. And by the way, we consulted all 294 of the people, well, all of the adults in the Meguanan population. And we consulted all of the Meguanans, including all the FNMs here. And then I put one condition. I said if these FNMs, who were council members of the FNM, including the then deputy leader of the FNM, opposed it, we would not go ahead with it. Okay. You have to take a break here. We'll come right back. Japan Direct Auto Sales. Your banner year for a car you always dreamed of in quality style. Select from a grand variety of pre-owned, low mileage Nissan Sentras in stunning colors that are priced at very affordable prices, five to seven thousand dollars. Toyotas starting from seven thousand dollars. They also have name brand Wyndham's, Avalon's, Hondas, and CRV Jeeps. Japan Direct will see you through in an excellent guaranteed vehicle. Phone Japan Direct Auto Sales today at 394-0439 or fax to 394-2573. Open 9 to 530, Monday through Saturday. Go roll away in your new vehicle today. La Rose Signature Cosmetics has revolutionized the face of Bahamian women of all skin tones, restoring a breathtaking younger looking skin, targeting and smoothing expression lines for elegant sophistication and flawless radiance, keeping every woman looking as young as she feels. Once you discover the difference La Rose Cosmetics has made, you will be thrilled. Behold a more beautiful you, exclusively at La Rose, West Bay. We're back here in this special program as we talk about governance in the Bahamas and Mr. Christie, Mr. Roberts, Mr. Alpitas and Mr. Davis are around the table. And uh, gentlemen, let's go to the other side of the table. Uh, we were talking about vision earlier on, and Mr. Christie talked about uh, Mr. Halkitas, uh, the project in Merguana. And um, the PLP, like the FNM, uh, is criticized for sustaining a narrow kind of economy. And that the PLP in 2000, between 2002 and 2007 did not expand the economy of the Bahamas. And I know Mr. Christie would like to answer that too, but let's hear from this side of the table. I think, um, Mr. Jones, the reality is that at the present time, tourism constitutes well in excess of 50% of our economy in terms of the GDP and in terms of employment. In the very short term, in the longer term, we can speak about diversification of the economy. In the short term, when we're talking about job and revenue generation, we must accept that that will come through the tourism industry. 
And so I think when we looked at the policies from 2002 to 2007, in particular, the creation of a Ministry of 